Bonjour. Hello, photographers. I'm traveling across France and look, no camera until I turn around and show you that I have the Sony RX100 Model 6 in the back pocket of my cycling jersey where it is awesomely easy to get to. It doesn't take up any space. It hardly feels like I have a camera on me at all. It turns on quickly and easily so I can do it all with one hand to shoot actually while I'm riding. So this is the third time that we've cycled the Canal du Midi in France and the third time that we've taken an RX100 model with us on this trip ideal for this purpose. While riding, I'm more cyclist than photographer, so I don't often take the time to study a scene or adjust my settings manually, and as a result, most of the photos are taken in program mode with auto ISO, which barely scratches the surface of the capabilities of this tiny powerhouse of a camera. Our self-guided trip was organized by La Rebenne, who books our accommodations and transfers our luggage. They sent along their latest brochure, which features a photo of Kim taken on a previous trip with the RX100. Kim and I were joined by our friends Judy and Andrew, and we take a casual pace, our average cycling speeds about 15 kilometers per hour, about 50 kilometers per day. But the RX106 takes you from whelmed to overwhelmed in about 60 seconds. Even the briefest glance at the manual or the menu will have you wondering how you're going to remember all it can do. So although it works well as a point and shoot, it's anything but. With battery and SD card, it weighs 300 grams and it comes with a wrist strap, but lugs for a neck strap are included. The 6 has a 20 megapixel 1 inch type sensor, and although that seems on the small side, I'm very happy with the several large prints from previous RX100 camera trips we have on our walls, and there's no faulting the quality of these images. While the RX106 does use full sized SD cards, it uses a very small Sony X battery. Most days I ended up swapping to the second battery mid-afternoon and then recharging while changing for dinner. I do carry a USB battery and since the USB port recharges it was easy to reduce when needed. All the controls, including menu, are on the right, making it simple for one-handed operation. Power button on top next to the shutter in the mode dial. After setting the date and time, I went to the menu to change the file format to RAW plus JPEG and to increase JPEG quality to extra fine. Not sure why those aren't the defaults. I also set video to 4K with 30p100. And among the other settings I customized, spot metering from center to focus point, wind noise reduction on, and movie with shutter on, which starts recording video with the shutter button when you're in video mode. I find that easier than fumbling with the little red movie button. Touch panel to panel plus pad, and pad operation to right half. Then I put my name in the copyright info. The viewfinder operation has been simplified. Pull the switch down and it snaps up ready to use. No more fiddling and pulling out the screen. And then there's a lever to adjust the diopter so I can shoot without my glasses and just push down when done. I appreciate that popping up the viewfinder also powers the camera and when the viewfinder is closed the camera powers off. But I did find that the diopter setting didn't stay put. I had to reset it several times a day. One of the upgrades on the Model 6 is a touch screen used to select a focus area or focus and snap. As I mostly shot with the viewfinder, I didn't really use it that often. And the lens is the big change for the Model 6. It's a Zeiss branded 24 to 200 millimeter equivalent lens, which opens to f2.8 when wide, ramping to f4.5. That makes it somewhat slower than previous RX100 models. And it extends quickly when powered on, but if you've zoomed into 200, it takes a few seconds to power down. That focal range provides an 8 time zoom. Very useful for both wide shots to capture the scene and close-ups to get to the details. The closest focus is about 8 centimeters, perfect for close-ups of food. And in France, that's something we end up doing a lot. From fresh figs and café crème at the Écluse de la Perruque, a picnic of charcuterie from a butcher shop in the arcade of the town square in Damazan, or fine dining at Goldfish in Golfesh, 
food photography is an essential part of a holiday in France. The ring on the lens changes function when the various modes are selected. In full auto, it's zoom, although there's also a zoom lever around the shutter button. And the ring's zoom function can be set to quick, which moves more rapidly, and stepped for the specific focal lengths on the screen. Zoom speed sets the speed on the zoom lever, which is used in video mode. While normal is a nice controlled zoom, it is fairly slow. Fast is... faster. If you do feel the need for more zoom past the 200mm equivalent, a digital zoom is available as long as you aren't shooting raw, with both clear zoom up to two times and digital zoom up to four times. As this crops in on the sensor, I would only use this for video and only clear zoom. In stills, I'll crop in Lightroom. Now, when you switch modes, the screen indicates the current function of both the lens ring and the control wheel on the back. In Program, the ring selects Program Shift settings for alternate shutter aperture combinations. In Aperture Priority, it sets the aperture. In Shutter, the shutter speed, indicated as TV, time value, on screen. In Manual, it's Aperture and the wheel is Shutter. In Scene Mode, it selects the scene. Now, it's not just the zoom settings that aren't available in RAW. Sony's excellent extended dynamic range feature, which offers an exposure differential up to six stops, is not available with RAW, and I decided instead of using this feature to shoot RAW, as in the past I've been able to create better results in Lightroom. There's lots of shadow and some highlight detail in properly exposed RAW files. The advantage of a single RAW file is that the multiple exposures taken for the HDR mode often results in artifacts. Picture effects, and I am fond of the illustration effect, is also not compatible with RAW. This would be such a great feature, but I'm not really prepared to give up RAW. Other manufacturers save both RAW and effect. Not sure why this has stumped Sony. And others also offer the ability to add these kinds of effects in playback. Sony offers no RAW processing or effects in playback at all. Back to RAW. Sony recently added two meter modes on some models, and they're included here. They're selected from the fun menu Highlight, which I find very useful when taking pictures of stained glass windows so that they don't blow out, and Full Screen Average. There's a tiny pop-up flash, which can be tilted back to bounce. There's no hot shoe. There are five focus modes, Single, Continuous, and Auto, which switches from Single to Continuous when movement is detected. Manual and Dynamic Manual, which uses autofocus and then allows manual override. Focus areas start at Wide, and then narrow down to Zone, which can be positioned to nine areas. Center, for old school types who prefer to focus and then compose. Flexible spot with large, small, and medium sizes. Small can be positioned on a 17 vertical by 19 horizontal grid, 323 points, which cover nearly the whole screen. Expand flexible increases the size of the spot when focus can't be found in the spot. By default, the center of the control wheel is used to activate eye autofocus, which helps get accurate focus for portraits, and this feature does not work in video mode. And there's a general focus override if faces are detected. It can be turned off in the menu if you don't find it helpful. The second option here displays a frame around detected faces. Faces can be registered and prioritized. Now, although slightly gimmicky, the Model 6 includes a smile shutter with three levels to automatically snap when a smile is detected. In general, focus is fast and confident, and seems to be similar in speed to Sony's higher-end full-frame models. That's impressive at this size. I did check for new firmware before leaving, there wasn't one yet, and I set up connectivity with my phone, activate Bluetooth, and then use the free Play Memories app to connect and download to my phone. Then back to the camera, turn on Location Info Link to synchronize time and location, and that's useful to identify where each photo was taken. Press the Fun button and then select one or a group of images to transfer. Menu starts the transfer. After transferring the images to the iPhone, I used AirDrop to transfer them to Kim, Judy, and Andrew so we could share them with our friends and post them to social media. 
I have not been able to master selfies, by which I mean I'm never happy with the results when the lens is that close to me. The screen does flip all the way up, and in this mode there's an on-screen countdown to take the image. Ugh. There are a few things I notice that are missing compared to previous models. RX100 cameras once had a novice mode to make shutter and aperture adjustments using plain language. And they used to have downloadable apps to add capabilities like time lapse. All gone. Not sure why. And there's no built in ND filter. On a camera without a filter thread on the lens, that's a big miss in my book, severely limiting my exposure options while shooting video. With a minimum aperture of f11 and a lowest video ISO of 125, most of my video was shot with a shutter speed of 1 over 125, which I find less than ideal. And if you'd like to use the Picture Profile S-Log settings, which forces the ISO to 1000, an ND filter is a puzzling omission. The mode dial makes it easy to switch from program mode stills to manual mode video and to select panorama, and there were lots of panorama opportunities on this trip. My preferred panorama configuration is wide and down, that's not the widest, but it is the tallest image, 5536 by 2160 pixels. I know it's me, but getting a level pan isn't easy. I also found burst mode, selected from the back control wheel, to be useful, and burst performance is quite amazing. Before we left, I tested using manual settings and saving JPEG fine files. High speed saves 24 images per second and keeps it up for nearly 10 seconds, a total of 233 images before slowing. That's absolutely astounding performance, unexpected in this camera. The drawback here is the extremely long time it takes to save, even with a fast card. Well over a minute, which caught me off guard after I'd taken a burst and couldn't figure out why I couldn't get the camera to turn off. I wish that UHS-2 type cards were supported. It was warm and sunny, and while the Model 6 does have the useful sunny weather setting, it's not available when shooting 4K video. And there are a few other video mode limitations. The HD video mode is limited to 29 minutes, and while that's fairly standard, 4K is limited to an arbitrary 5 minutes, or even less with higher temperatures. While I did worry about that, most of the recordings I made during this trip were under 2 minutes, so it was never an issue during our holiday. And while testing at 22 degrees Celsius, I was able to do back-to-back -back recording for about 14 minutes before it did overheat and shut down. There is an on-screen overheating alert, which starts by flashing and dimming the screen and ends with a countdown. While some Sony models have a setting to increase the alert temperature, that's not an option here. Now, there are steady shot settings for both stills and video, although the advanced modes are not available in 4K. The videos used in this review are all 4K and shot handheld. I felt the stabilization did its job. It's not a gimbal, but it certainly helps. However, the stabilization is not up to the task of shooting while riding. The Model 6 is one of a few cameras that can simultaneously take still images while recording videos, but not in 4K. If you're good with HD 1080, you'll find this quite a useful feature, but turn off the movie with shutter function, otherwise you'll stop recording when you snap. In manual mode, press the shutter to take a photo, which it does without any interruption to the video recording. Images can be set to any of three JPEG quality settings, and there are three resolutions, up to 17 megapixels. There's an auto mode, which can be useful, but it mostly waits for a smile before taking an image. Lots of features preferred by video shooters, zebra for exposure, peaking for focus, and the Model 6's menu has just about all the options available in other new Sony models, and I'm finding these useful. The white balance setting includes multiple presets, Kelvin from 2500 to 9900, and three custom slots, and the priority set to keep warm interiors from getting too white. Auto ISO has the useful fast, faster, and slow, slower settings to prioritize speed or quality in low light situations works well. And while I do appreciate these, it does get a little cumbersome to navigate through the menu when you want to adjust them. 
I found standard shutter speeds a little slow, so I adjusted to fast. And the Model 6 has all the latest picture profile gamma settings, S-Log 2, 3, and 4 variants of hybrid log gamma for advanced video production. But without ND... Mm, there are some advanced frame rate options, HFR. These offer combinations of record settings and playback frame rates from 4 times to 40 times slow. These recordings are silent, limited to a few seconds of record time, and reduce in quality as they get slower. If you are looking for slow motion, you might be better off using the HD 1080 mode, which can record at 120 frames. Now, that will only get you five times slow, but the quality is considerably better, and recording length is not as limited. There's a live HDMI out, which I use to capture the menus and other screens, and there's a menu of HDMI options if you are recording to an external recorder, which is one way to beat the five minute limit, but not the overheating issue. While useful for selecting focus, Touch functionality is limited compared to the competition. You can't use it to navigate the menu system. And Sony's playback features remain the most limited of any camera manufacturer. And I've ranted at length about Sony's menu system. I don't need to repeat my recommendations for improvement here, except to say that my advice has not yet been heeded. I would encourage you to use the My Menu screen to select the settings you use most often. That will greatly increase your usability. We did have a wonderful trip, and thanks to the RX100 Model 6, came home with some great photos. Now, before I put the Model 6 back in the box, let me say that it is well suited to travel photography in a hands-off kind of way. And while it's a super capable video recorder, the lack of ND means it's not quite as useful as it might be. More details about the trip and the camera are below, along with space for your comments. And I do reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. I enjoy interacting with you. So shoot until your memory card's full and your battery is empty. And if this channel and my content pleases you, then it would please me to have you as a subscriber. Thanks.